In this video, I'm gonna be talking about induced drag, which is a drag created as a byproduct of lift. Let's take a look. So the four forces acting on an aircraft are lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Drag is the force that opposes our motion through the atmosphere, and it acts opposite to our flight path. For low speed aircraft, drag is made up of two major components, parasite drag and induced drag. Now, parasite drag is a result of friction. Induced drag, however, would exist even in a perfect world without friction. It's a byproduct of lift, and it is tied to the production of wingtip vortices. We've seen in a previous video that the pressure difference between the top and bottom of the wing causes airflow around the wingtips. This creates a rotating flow called wingtip vortices. We've also seen that wingtip vortices cause downwash, which is a necessary result of producing lift. This downwash can be a cause of lift or an effect of lift, depending on how you look at it. But it will always be associated with lift. All real, free-flying objects creating lift will produce downwash. Now next, let's visually represent lift with arrows to symbolize the direction and magnitude of the aerodynamic force. In other words, let's use vectors to continue our lift and induced drag conversation. Okay, so one of the properties of lift is that it acts perpendicular to the relative airflow. If we look at the free stream relative airflow, that doesn't seem like a big deal. Lift acts up. But let's look more closely at the flow over the wing. As we move back along the cord line of the wing, the relative airflow is being redirected downward by the vortices so that we can get downwash off the trailing edge. When the relative airflow is reorientated like this, the lift force rotates with it, so the lift is inclined back. Although the lift is acting at an angle, we're interested in the components that are perpendicular and parallel to the free stream relative airflow. The perpendicular component is lift. The parallel component acts back and opposes the forward motion of the aircraft, contributing to drag. This portion of drag is called induced drag. So normally we think of induced drag as a source of drag, which of course it is, but we also need to note that induced drag results in a loss of lift. Okay, let's work through this. Consider an infinitely long wing, a wing with no wingtips. This wing won't create wingtip vortices because there are no tips for the air to flow around. Without vortices, the wing won't produce downwash. Without downwash, the lift will act straight up. It won't be inclined back. So no wingtips implies no induced drag. Now, in the real world, this happens in wind tunnels, but it never happens in free flying aircraft. When we account for the wingtips, we see that the lift is inclined back. We've already seen that this is the source of induced drag. But look at what happens as the lift vector rotates back. The vertical component of the lift shrinks, so yes, a wing with wing tips and the associated vortices will in fact produce less lift than an infinite long wing or the same wing mounted in a wind tunnel. This means that a wing with wing tips will have to fly at a higher angle of attack than an infinite wing in order to produce the same net lift. Now we don't normally have to worry about this difference between infinite wings and wings with wing tips. Aircraft manufacturers account for it for us when they design and test the aircraft. So the flight manual data we have is based on the real wing, not the theoretical infinite wing. However, there is one place where this difference between infinite wings and wings with wingtips is still important, close to the ground, when we are in ground effect. But we will cover ground effect in its own video. Quick pause, I just want to tell you about our course available on Udemy, Flight Instrument Essentials. In Flight Instrument Essentials, we have a detailed look at how the flight instruments work, including physical principles, power sources, and display interpretation. If you're interested, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for supporting Pilot Effect. Now, back to induced drag. All right, so we know where induced drag comes from and what effect it has on our aircraft. Now let's predict induced drag's behavior. 
So it goes like this. Induced drag is influenced by the design of the wing and by operating conditions. We'll talk about wing design in another video. So let's set it aside for now and focus on operating conditions. The main operating condition that influences induced drag are lift and speed. Let's start with lift and how it affects induced drag. Well, as we produce more lift, the pressure difference between the top and bottom of the wing increases. As a result, the wingtip vortices get stronger and more downwash is produced. With stronger downwash, the back deflection of lift is increased and we end up with more induced drag. So bottom line, more lift means more induced drag. Some situations where more lift is being produced would be flying at higher aircraft weights or maneuvering and pulling G's, such as during turns or pull-ups. Okay, so now on to speed and how it affects induced drag. As we move slower, we have less airflow over the wings, but we need to continue producing enough lift to balance our weight. To do this at lower speeds, we need to increase the downwash. More downwash means more air being deflected, resulting in more or the same lift even though we are at a lower speed. But as far as induced drag is concerned, what really matters is that the increased deflection of the airflow at lower speeds means the lift is inclined further back, resulting in more induced drag. This is a bit counterintuitive, so it's worth taking a minute to think about. All things being equal, we get more induced drag at lower airspeeds. This is important because we operate at low speeds during takeoff and landing, and induced drag can play an important role during these phases of flight. And that's all I have for you on induced drag. Thank you for watching. Check out the links in the description and have a wonderful day.